What is good YouTube? It's that one camera guy back at again with another video for you. Today I'm testing out the Sony RX100 Mark VI and I am just doing the selfie test right now. I'm shooting at 24 millimeters equivalent at f2.8. You can hear sort of like the audio pickup pattern on the RX100 Mark VI and it looks pretty good. I'm just looking at it right now. I'm going to walk down a little bit so you can see what this is doing. But uh, I'm here at Photocon LA just testing this camera out. So what you're hearing right now is how the audio sounds like when you've got a lot of background noise going around around you so but I will have a little bit more detail on the, the Sony RX100 Mark VI in just a little bit so uh, stay tuned for that if you don't know me already I go by that one camera guy. <laughs> hey if you're finding me for the first time I go by that one camera guy <laughs> I do tutorials, guides, and reviews on Sony mirrorless equipment and gear. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the latest content. And don't forget to smash that like button because it always helps out the channel. So I had the chance to go ahead and test out the Sony RX100 Mark VI for a very brief moment at Photocon LA. Uh, actually, this this Sunday, depending on when you're actually seeing this video. I'm not printing paper. We can get 50% no, off on all don't you dare. Don't you dare. Ooh, nice. Don't go. No, 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 no. I hate you all. No, Let's do it. Not. Let's do it. No. Leave, leave a like down below if me and Jason should, uh, should, should get a, a best. 50% no, off a best. No. <laughs> really gonna go over every aspect about the camera because well I don't have it with me but this is the mark 5 I already sort of dive talked a little bit about it in my previous video which you can find over here but I will kind of just go over and list off cons and pros and then sort of um, at the very end try to describe who the camera is actually for right I think that's the biggest question but I think other reviewers have already done a good job so I'm just really giving you my perspective on this um, so first of all some major points the camera looks almost identical to the previous one in terms of shape and size even when the lens is extended out um, as you can see in the pre uh, in the actual video clip hopefully it's almost exactly the same so not a big deal there uh, so let's go over start, let's start covering some of the cons all right so the first big one is that uh, it still uses the same battery so you're gonna get the same battery performance you did with the RX100 Mark V and Mark IV or so so that's not going to improve. Now there's no ND filter built into the actual camera. I don't know if it's an issue when you, they create longer telephoto lenses inside of their compact cameras, but there's no more ND filters, which really sucks. It, it also happened with the RX10 Mark III when Sony released that. They got rid of it after the Mark II. So the next thing is uh, there's still only a five limit five minute limit on recording in 4K. That hasn't changed since the previous generation. You now only have an f2.8 aperture, so you're seeing some of the video footage. That was all shot at f2.8, um, as far as you can see. We already pointed this out before, there's a lack of audio input in the Sony RX100 Mark VI. And this is the thing that you're gonna cut, I'm gonna cut into a little clip right now, and you're gonna see, um, and hear the audio. So if you notice in that clip, after I took a listen to it, the audio was actually really tough to hear when there's a lot of uh, environmental sounds going on, especially at this convention, so to speak. So I did really put it in a challenging environment, especially with a lot of people talking around you. But if you're kind of vlogging, I think it's fine. But if you're looking for better quality audio, more pristine audio, it's definitely not gonna be what you want. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. Another thing is the buffer is going to fill up. Yes, you're going to get 24 frames per second like you did in the previous generation, um, but if you run that shutter, you're going to have to wait quite a while until all the files write off. So Sony kind of missed on the UHS-2 opportunity on the car to help run the buffer, but again, it's, it's not really a pro camera, it's a, a consumer-based camera, um, but that's the situation. All right, so now let's go ahead and dive into some of the pros. Uh, the 24 to 200 is really great. I got a chance to go ahead and try it out indoors. So uh, zooming it in and out, I could get pretty close to certain areas uh, of, of the convention at 200 millimeters. And it still looked pretty good in the EVF to me. And maybe you can see some of the clips or not, hopefully. Um, autofocus is very good. Um, I was testing it out with a little bit of movement, and then I also tried out the eye autofocus. So, uh, especially when I was trying to vlog with it, noticed that it actually kept track of my face. 
that was always a good thing, especially if it's kind of having like a dual vlogging nature. And I think even when I was kind of zoomed kind of further out, the focus still did a good job of tracking its subject. So that was also a good thing, uh, something that I expected. 24 frames per second, like I mentioned before. Eye autofocus again improved, or from the looks of it, looks really good, especially uh, when you notice the shots with the model. It does have anti distortion now. I'm gonna go with the glasses. Oh, oh, it doesn't like people with glasses. <laughs> it doesn't track eye. It doesn't track glasses. I'm going to the A9. I didn't get to test that out, unfortunately, but um, that's something to note on there. And then the EVF. Uh, if I end up do needing it, I never found this an issue. So for example, when you had to do two kind of steps in order to get access to the EVF, I never really found it a big deal. Um, so I don't know if it's a major pro, but I guess it can be for some. So uh, let's see here. So let's talk about uh, sort of like who this camera is for, right? So having had the chance to, to get to use it and play around with it a little bit, uh, this is, I think, the best kind of camera for a travel photographer and, and videographer to, this, to some degree, right? If you're just travel vlogging and you want to take photos and video, I think this is a pretty good choice for you because of its compact size. In other words, you're looking for, uh, you're really looking for a camera that's going to do better than your phone in some cases, right? Especially for the telephoto air, um, arena where you want to get some more reach in your shots. This is going to be a really great choice for you. Uh, the advanced enthusiast. So what I mean by that are those of you who kind of still want one camera but understand how the cameras work. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Um, Professionals seeking higher quality in a pocket. So maybe you're a working professional and you know you may, you might actually own like an A9 or A7R3, and there's occasions that you know that you won't be able to bring a um, your big bulky camera, and all you have is a little tiny point and shoot, and you want the absolute best quality, and you know how the Sony menus and how to control all the settings work. This is well, the RX100 Mark VI is a really great uh, consideration for that. And finally. Uh, also, Sony shooters who just have a lot of cash to burn because this no one that doesn't act if you don't shoot Sony, you're not going to buy this camera. I, I don't see it as a good recommendation for someone that you know to go off and buy a Sony camera because it's not very intuitive. And secondly, if you buy an RX100 Mark VI for $1,200 and you're just shooting in auto mode, it's probably the worst thing you can do. You're not taking full advantage of the actual camera. So I think it's gonna be a really niche camera, unfortunately. It has a lot of potential. It misses in certain cases. Um, but, you know, it's very specific to a finite group of people. And so I think even in the previous video that I posted, some folks have posted that they do like the, ex the added zoom to it, especially for travel-based usage. So some concerns, um, like I said, they miss a lot of potential. They forgot the audio input as an opportunity. Like I said, I wasn't too happy with necessarily the audio quality, but I think if you're just vlogging for a little bit here and there, it'll do just fine. A lack of ND filter, you're not gonna get very smooth 24P video uh, because of that in some cases. And then you do lose a bit of a drop in aperture. So when you're zooming in the lens, for example, once you're kind of zoomed out to 70 millimeters, you're gonna be at F4. So before in the past, when you were at 70 millimeters in the RX100 Mark V, you were just at f2.8. So you've effectively lost the stop of light within the same ranges. So some suggestions for Sony. Oh, and finally, one thing I want to mention is that a final like recommendation is that the RX100 Mark VI, I feel, is probably not going to be the best general purpose vlogging camera. I think you should still go ahead and consider picking up an RX100 Mark V as your general vlogging camera if you if you want it as a really great tool. Uh, that's where it's going to be at, in my opinion, if you want to stay within the, e the Sony ecosystem. There are other brands out there, but I'm not an expert in those. I'm only speaking on behalf of the Sony products right now. So uh, suggestions, again, Sony, you need an audio input, really valuable ND filter options in the camera, the longer 4K recording times because it's lacking in there. But I, I don't really use this so much to record 4K video a lot, just really 1080p 60 or 120 frames per second. And to conclude it, uh, if you want a high-end tech, if you want the highest end tech from Sony, uh, mirrorless cameras packed in your pocket, this is pretty much your camera. It's 1200 bucks. Uh, so unfortunately, I think it's only going to serve a very small niche of uh, users um, if they want all those features and potential in a small compact size. 
again, uh, let me know your thoughts again in the comments down below. Uh, I, I really do like the camera. It's it, I can see a lot of potential for my case usage, but my case usage is so very niche. And I already own a variety of Sony cameras. So for someone that might own just one Sony camera, it might be a nice addition, but for $1,200, it's a difficult camera to add to your bag. So um, yeah, let me know again if you if you are planning to get it, but I have a, <laughs> my sentiment is a lot of folks are probably just either gonna stick with their RX100 Mark V or just skip the six altogether and maybe get this. Um, but that's gonna do it for me guys in this video. Don't forget to smash that like button if you found some benefit in this video. Subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the latest content. And with that said, I'm your host, that one camera guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. I left my heart in California. I let it go deep into the blue. I could be happy in California. I would be fine with just me and you. Now don't go changing